Hello and welcome back to going into probably a pub, some kind of tavern, at night, of course. Uh, when else we would be going inside the pub, I suppose. And, uh, maybe if you're looking for other companions, actually. If there's one unsavory figure in town, he's gonna be here. So, I'm looking forward for that. To that, can tell. Bunch of musicians. Do you enjoy a coin, my friend? Can you lift a sword? Oh yeah. So Gintel. Hail and welcome to the wild mare, friend. Ah, what a handsome guy. A jovial man at the bar grins and motions you closer. His arms are corded with thick muscle and cross-hatched with scars. Now, what can I do for you? I'm looking for more intimate entertainment. You see Somebody anything you sell. like? You let me Backstage storage room. I can rest there for free. Private dance room. Plus one casts with level one spells. And plus one to all skills. I can also hire some adventurers. Recruit crew members. Retain characters. Okay. And buy ale for the crew. It doesn't actually give the the crew morale bonus. It just uh, doesn't take away their morale. That's odd. Some nuts, eggs, rice. They are so sad to drink water. They prefer ale. Sure. Now, I'm looking for more do for intimate you? entertainment. You're in luck, friend. The wild mare employs a number of courtesans skilled in satisfying a wide range of tastes and interests. He throws you an exaggerated wink and points toward the stairs behind him. Seraphim's eyes close as he nods <laughs> along. You'll find them upstairs. They handle their own coin too, so no need to go through me. Be right. seeing you. That's all right, Ginto. What? You're the dancer? I wonder how the courtesans dress. My one soul is from the tedious bureaucracy. Horse and bars. I think Luca is the most enlightened man in town. The Bocco. Ado, my friend. I knew our paths would cross eventually. You, you did? <clears throat> a valiant shouts over the din of the wild mare to get your attention, turning a great many hats to study your exchange. He takes a hearty swig of his tankard. I bet you say that to all your clients? Nah, there's no need to encourage him. Do I know you? Not yet, but I know that we will be fast friends. Tell me, you are the one who sails that fine ship, Huck? Terrorize the docks with spirits, Huck? Yeah, not exactly my intention. Leaning in close, he sips from the tankard and loudly sucks moisture from his upper lip. Uh, Watcher, Captain of the Defiant, at your service. I am Aboko, and I am positioned to offer... Uh, I have opportunities for... He clumsily unfolds a sheaf of parchment. The tankard slips in his grasp and spills ill down the front of his trousers. He gawks down at himself in horror. Thousand times I practiced my speech. Mera, never did it go this poorly. You were saying? I am supposed to be in the business of giving bounties, but I know no one who hunts them. <laughs> he stamps his feet, kicking up a spray of spilled ale. No one will unfurl their sail for my humble payments, but I must start from the bottom and work my way to the top, huh? So you're also paying very poorly for the bounties. What bounties do you have available? You... you will take the job? You will take the job. He grips you by the shoulders and smiles, tears springing to the corners of his eyes. Agrasima, something special for my first hunter then. He drains the tankard and tucks it under his arm to retrieve his 
Chief of Notes. Ah, I will start you on Meriel, the mad animancer. She tortures her victims with unspeakable treatments before casting what's left to Bereth's will. My contacts saw her leaving Port Maje and heading west of Maje Island. Give Mario's head? She joins the goddess of death in the beyond? Wait, what? We have her head? Just... What? How do you have her head? My first bounty to pay off. An exciting day for us both. I'm more freaked out by the fact that I had Mario's head with me. Baco passes you a small pouch of coins. 1400 copper? You have lost an item, Mario? The mat's head? Well, I'm really glad that I got rid of that. Maybe it's not much, but as I make more deals, more pirates will be available, Ak. What bounties do you have available? Ah, I finally managed to land the rights to a bounty of value. You may not like it. There is a thirsty drake who roosts near an oasis northeast of Maja Island. An important site for refilling canteens. The local tribes call him Purakeo, <laughs> after a sea dragon of legend. Even so, they have no love for this water thief. Yeah, by the way, I have the Purakeo's head in my other pocket. To think that such a magnificent creature could also be a water hoarding pest. Dragons are a complicated bunch. He hefts the head and looks deeply into its eyes before passing you payment. Agrasima, my friend. You will let me know if you are interested in more work, Ak. What other work you got? A marauder gang boss called Nomu broke free of custody along with the rest of his plunder buddies. It is said they wasted no time getting up to their old tricks. Okay. I don't think I killed those. Nomu slipped the noose again. That half mastered bastard be three ways mad and twice that a killer. Ayora would be better off shot of him. You seem familiar, friend. Baco shuffles through his notes before shrugging and giving Prison up. Prison is too kind for a pirate. So there is a bounty on Nomu's head. He and his ilk fled to the wilderness north of Nekitaka. Got it. I return with his head. Farewell. I think we did the... The missions. Now we actually have another mission. Captain Radora? Oh, this is the one we have to convince to you pay up. I cannot down the rest? Watch me, Aimiko. A valiant sailor raises her tankard and arches her back to invite a torrent of ale down her expectant mouth. Holding this pose with no nothing to show for it, she taps the tankard, the tankard's base, and furrows her brow at its apparent emptiness. Her companion shakes his head and focuses his attention elsewhere. Madiko, it is no wonder I thirst. As she wipes her mouth with the back of her hand, her eyes widen and meet yours. Ado, why do you stare? You don't seem to be having as much fun as the rest of the clientele. Ah, uh, the fun ran dry with the coin. She manages. Oh, then smile. When the dancers see more than an empty purse. I will be a content Radora. She sighs up at the stage. Okay, I can give you a, a few coppers, so the next grog is on me. A grassima. Even in the oasis I am parched. She pockets the coins and glances past you to the bar. If you grant wishes, there is a vacancy on my ship. Radur's frown cracks to reveal a shy smile. Yet another reminder that not every seaworthy vessel will be crewed up to the standards of the sorcerer. He shakes his head. As the captain of the Defiant, I'm ordered taken. Sientere, Sere. Radora inclines her head. Next time around the wheel, perhaps. Farewell. Wait, what? Ado, you return. Where in the blazes is that old man? Khan? <laughs> nice and quiet. Oh, never mind that. 
I guess we won't be uh, stealing from there. A young woman lingers uh, near the stage with a mug of ale clutched tight in her hands. Though she shows no interest in the dancers, the bags beneath her eyes speak to many long nights spent drinking in the tavern. She looks lazily about the room until her gaze alights on you with interest. Have you seen an old elf hanging around here lately? Dress is funny, probably drunker than an eel in a barrel of mead. An elf that dresses funny? And drunk? You need to narrow it down. Uh, as serendipity would have it, I met him not long ago. Are you talking about my good old friend? You have. Where? In a humongous pyramid dedicated to Wadik out, out in the middle of nowhere. Oh yeah, the old man. Don't keep me in suspense, what happened to him? He was on trial for road breaking, I saved him, but left him to his own devices. She waves you off. I don't care about the details. Did you find any coin on him? No, the man was flat broke. Andres pendulous teats, that charlatan cheated me. <laughs> she slams her fist down on the table. Thanks for the information. I can't say I like what I heard, but I'm glad to be done with this nonsense all the same. Ken gives you a curt nod and downs the remainder of her drink in one gulp. She hustles out the door without pausing to look back. Is that it? By the way, uh, Elot wants to talk to me. I wish you'd maintained my story in front of Vanessa and the others. He looks at you reproachfully. His eyes and mouth are tight with disapproval. I didn't enjoy deceiving them, but it seemed simpler than the alternative. Well, I'm sorry about that, Elad. Still thinking about Vanessa? <sighs> I realized there could be nothing between us. But it was nice to have a friend all the same. I thought we were friends. His expression softens. You stood with me through more than anyone I've ever known. He claps. Clasps his hands together, working his fingers into a tight knot. But a lot has happened over the last five years. Well, tell me. After we parted, I set out to destroy the leaden key. Edder gives a nod and a wink. It's controlled us for too long. I wanted to free Kith from it. So for five years, I've been tracking down leaden key circles. Searching for the places where they operate in secret. He knits his brows. Seraphim strokes his braided beard beneath a quiet smirk. Trying to undo them. And, uh, how has that been going? The task has been more difficult than I anticipated. How so? I don't think I fully understood the weight of the decisions I would have to make. Or the burden of living with them. It was much easier when I only had to follow someone else's lead. My father's, Theos's, yours. He glances at you out of the corner of his eye. What do you mean exactly? I have a good guess. After we defeated Theos, I thought the hard part of undoing his work would be tracking down the Leaden Key's members and operations. Okay, but... Perhaps this would be easier with an example. I went to a village in Old Valia. A run-down backwater river place. I right home like it was. Elad's expression shifts as Izomir briefly emerges. <laughs> nice. A past iteration of Elad, uh... Corfisser's soul, Izumir was a brash, hill-speaking elven woman who lived in Edir long ago. She awakened in Elot's soul after his father attacked him and frequently got him into trouble with her cheeky comments and aggressive behavior. Uh, centuries ago, <clears throat> the Leaden Key had intervened to end some heretical cult. Yeah, I, I did like that uh, option in the first game, uh, making them coexist 
and share their body. The details were lost, but what had endured was a practice of ritual bloodletting. A Sounds... gruesome, pointless tradition. Yes. You got an eye for charming little towns, I'll say that much. At every full moon, the villagers would feed the soil with their blood. No one, young or old, sick or hale, was exempt. Uh, yes. Uh... There are too many idiots in the world right away. Well, you can help them, but you shouldn't feel too bad if you can't help them. What did you do? The village priest administered the practice. Grim old fellow. Reminded me of Theos. He raised an eyebrow at you. Wicked El Bunbak. Tis what the lad means. He was a tyrant. I was certain that if the villagers were free of his influence, they'd be free from the bloodletting too. No. I like to think that too, but... Now they're already brainwashed. So I arranged for him to have an accident. He gives you a sly look. Seraphim's eyes <laughs> close to you as he nods along. So he puffs out a heated breath. That seems like one of a Taos' dirty tricks. I'd expect you to act with honor. No, I, I totally uh, agree with that. I say clever. I thought so. At first. Seraphim strokes his uh, braided beard beneath a quiet smirk. Irked, Xoti runs her tongue over her teeth. The old man died, and the villagers were terrified. Oh no! I could see how this even backfires even further. Because they're like, oh my god, we lost the big guy. Now we need to uh, do even more bloodletting. They were convinced his death was an ill omen. They blamed it and every other mishap that befell them on their lack of faith. Uh-oh. So they began bloodletting every week, turning on their neighbors for giving too little. His lips twist as if the words themselves have a bitter taste. Instead of a handful dying each year, a few perished every week. He's worked the edge of uh, his sash into a tight knot. He clenches it between pale, rig rigid fingers. Well, I could see why you could, you could say that you're responsible for that, but in a way you tried to help them, and it, and it turned out worse. I suppose you didn't really understand the situation as much, but I can't blame you at all, nor should you blame yourself. Maybe you should have left them alone? I don't agree with that. I very much disagree with that. That's just a covered way out. Like... Like, if you're not try, you're gonna fail for sure. Like, what was a guarantee is that if he doesn't do anything, then it's gonna continue, and probably it's gonna escalate anyway. So, I definitely disagree with that. So, inaction is in itself uh, a failure. So, no. And now you feel responsible, is that it? That's a bit of pointing out the obvious here. You couldn't have known what would happen, this isn't your fault. Fair enough. If you barely understood this ritual, how did you expect to stop it? You tried to do the right thing and that's what matters. I'm gonna say that. Is it? In the end, the villagers suffered more because of my actions. He pauses again, untwisting the sash at his lap. I keep wondering what I might have done differently, or how I could have known better. There are no guarantees. I don't think that was a mistake. Learning from mistakes like this is a good start, but it's also important to note that not everything 
needs to be, like, considered a mistake. Like... What am I even trying to say here? You're just kind of like dropping it, this on me a lot. It's really uh, tough to decide. Uh, or just really come up with the right answer here. My point is, I guess, what I, I really want to point out is that if there is something happens, it doesn't mean you're doing anything necessarily wrong or right. It doesn't mean you have to uh, change, for example. Like if you just kept doing things and for example you got mugged and now you like you're doing you're learning self-defense and whatnot and you're never gonna get mugged again or maybe you're just like and you're like overreacting to a situation and uh or maybe you're just gonna I don't know be be more cold and like you're kinda overreacting to that. Like it was not a mistake. So, stop dwelling on this, you paralyze yourself. Yeah, you don't want to get into the analysis paralysis. You know, what you you saw a problem, you decided that, you know, this is bad. I'm going to try to help. It didn't work. And you bailed. Classic move. The villagers had found a way to live with the ritual. In time, perhaps they would have changed on their own. That's dumb. I don't think it you necessarily went for the right approach. I think it can be considered a mistake because they were fairly brainwashed. So, I could see why murdering the the guy who is the quote-unquote leader makes less sense than for example, if possible, showing the futility of the practice of this uh, ritual. Not sure how it could have been done. But yeah. The villagers chose this. They are to blame here, not you. The thing with blame is that who is to blame for this? The villagers? The guy who controlled them? Like I, I just don't really... Like... Assigning the blame is kind of a futile uh, um, I don't know. Oh, it's, it's it's futile. So I don't know. I don't care for that. I don't have an answer for that. I can't really blame the villagers for that. But one for sure, you try to do the good thing. So. This is all like speculation. Like, there's no one answer that I'm really happy with here. But, like, I don't like the second answer because learning from mistakes like this is a good start. Like, what do we consider a mistake? Her, uh, his action to act? I don't think that was the mistake. Like, like maybe the, the type of action he took can be considered a mistake. Because it didn't have the... Uh, the the preferred outcome, I suppose. But choosing the act was not a mistake, as far as I'm concerned. And the four is like, uh, no, that's a terrible answer. I guess what I can say is like, stop dwelling on this, you paralyze yourself. But that's that's not really a solution, like... Obviously, this is kind of a dilemma a lot is dealing with here, and I'm gonna take it seriously, and uh, and uh, just saying that stop dwelling on this is not necessarily gonna fix it. However, uh, there's never gonna be, I believe, a satisfying answer to this. So ultimately, you just kind of need to get over it and just focus on uh, the future, I suppose. I think assigning blame to the villagers is just not correct. Uh, saying I don't know is not necessarily correct. I think stop dwelling on this, you paralyze yourself is probably the closer the closest one that I can I can uh I can accept here. Damn. I suppose so. I would rather uh, tell him what to do than what not to do because what not to do doesn't tell you what to do 
Like, just think of one thing that you don't want to do, instead of actually having a plan what to do instead of that. Now that's a lot better. You have this plan that like, oh, I don't want to make that mistake, or what I could have done instead of that. That's that's a lot better question, and uh, actually, like, what you could have done is completely pointless. Anyway, back to the game. <laughs> Thank you. It's a relief to share this burden. You've given me a lot to think about. I do like these dilemmas, and I kind of wanted to uh, go into it a little bit more. Wait, you still haven't told me what the Animancers have to do with any of this. Yeah. Why did you lie to them? Why did you infiltrate their ranks? Ah, that. He massages his temples. I'm looking for an old leaden key sect. I found several references, but... He breaks off, shaking his head. I want to be sure. Uh, please, let me go over my notes again. Then I promise I'll tell you everything. Uh, this isn't about your notes. You're second-guessing yourself again. I think it, it's it's okay to second guess yourself, but you also have to realize that what has been done cannot be changed. So, like, <laughs> you know me too well. All the same, I need to gather my thoughts. We'll talk more later, then. All right, a lot. Right, Captain, uh, if I could bend your ear a moment, uh, I'll be aiming to thank you for bringing me aboard. A third hand at his belly and one heel out, he bows deeply, drooping ear almost touching the ground. You run a tight shop, and you ain't no terrible person, neither. It'd be a welcome change from the gentleman of leisure. You're welcome. I'm glad you're with me. I would rather say that. I don't have time for this. I've a gift for you. This trinket be from one of the first ships I hunted. Malnaj would have snatched it had I not found the perfect hiding spot. So where did you hide it? Thank you for the gift, Seraphim. You be entirely welcome. Now, if you'll pardon me, I've round about reached my limit for sentiment. Let's not be rude. Seraphim salutes, grinning broadly, and turns away. We'll be rushing that thing for sure. Cypher's Shackle. Plus one con. Alright, does this thing have a second floor? But, a lot does bring up a good point of how are we gonna deal with this newfound, well, that's kind of relevant, is that how are we gonna deal with this newfound uh, admiration toward Eotas? Well, it's not really newfound, but like, like kind of undeserved. Ymir? Oh, see it? something you like? No. The dancer turns to greet you, a coy smile tugging at his uh, lips. He is short for an elf, but no less graceful for his lacking height. His long face and dark eyes lend him a solemn air, but any hint of gloom is chased away by the wash of color in his cheeks. Aloth! This is the last place I expected to see you. Have your interests changed so much since our time at Bragon Hill? A grin lights up Ymir's face. He fidgets with his uh, self uh, his hair self-consciously, smoothing it down where it's been must. Mm, no, I still enjoy tile puzzles and deflecting personal questions. Anyway, what are you doing here? He looks away as though he's trying to ignore Ymir's eager gaze. Adder points affably in approval. <laughs> I could ask the same of you. He laughs slightly, hand over his mouth. I make my own hours, meet fascinating people, and the coin's nothing to sneer at. Better than stuffy old books and unflattering robes. He casts a critical eye over Elot's outfit. He opens his mouth to speak, but decides better of it. 
This is amazing. Introduce me to your handsome friend a lot. This is Emir, an old friend from my academy days. Right. A pleasure to meet you. It's good to see you again, Aloth. Anyway, I should get back to it. Be well. He smiles warmly at Elad, blush coloring the tips of his ears. It was lovely seeing you. He catches himself again, uh, looking panicked. Perhaps lovely is too strong a word. I meant pleasant. Uh, perfectly agreeable. He looks at you. Check rent. I can see where I may have confused the poor fellow in our academy days. It was a right fierce labor getting the lad to finger any flesh that weren't covering his spelly books. <laughs> uh oh. It was right fierce late. Okay, sure. So we know what's up. Did you enjoy the show? There's more to see if you're interested. How much for your time? Ah, the money minded type. I've always found fiscal responsibility very attractive. My time will cost you 150 copper, friend. Never mind. Till later then. Leave oh. it to me. I'm I'm looking for more like the cheap horse. Or oh, what? Plus stride and plus survivor. No sweat. Wait, what? An Alice? Aren't we supposed to talk with you? A young woman reclines on the cushions. A who ha who ka who's held delicately in one hand. Eyes closed, she sings to herself. Her voice is soft and inviting. She doesn't move when she hears you approach, but slowly opens her eyes with a lazy smile. Come, lay your head on my breast. I will read to you the work of my favorite poet, Skilba. Well, that is strangely uh tempting but also very very boring i i can't believe it it was going so well but then reading me a poem i save your friend friend oswald oh yeah i did not from something too dangerous i hope yeah, I did. Please, accept my thanks. He's a kind old man. I would have mourned to see something terrible happen to him. She clasps your hands and hers and gives them a little squeeze. I have little to give you in thanks. Perhaps you'd be amenable to some establishment gossip. And services! Mm -hmm. She raises a veil sculpted brow and gives you a cheery little wink. Constantin, the masseuse, longs to wander the world again. Every time he threatens to leave, Gintel begs him to stay, and every time he promises to remain for just a month more. I see. I wonder what he hopes to find out there. So, potential companion? Have you come to hear some verse? What? Not even free services? This is... This is bullcrap. I saved your grandpa. <laughs> okay, I'm just starting to realize where, where this could go wrong. No, no, no. This is... No, I'm, I think I'm in the right here. I saved your grandpa for free. He's about to get killed in a pyramid by some crazy cultists. And now we're going to do it. How much for your time? 100 copper pans. A reasonable fee to experience the sublime words of a dear's greatest poets. Don't you think? No! If, I, if you're gonna read me verses, then you gotta pay me 100 instead. That's the counter offer. Come, lay your head on my breast. I will read to you the work of my favorite poet, Skilba. Tell me about yourself. It's futile to attempt to summarize the whole of a person in simple words. How to capture their dreams, the desires of another, their feel and taste. That taste? Okay. But I appreciate your curiosity nonetheless. 
I am an actor. <laughs> Trained from childhood. Difficult for you to believe, I'm sure. A teasing smile pours at the corner of her lips. Her voice is wistful, almost melancholic. My troupe were my family, and we travelled the whole of the Adir Empire, performing the classic literatures to cheering audiences. Too bad you didn't do something more productive with your time. <laughs> well, to be fair, I'm not gonna disrespect it. Obviously she's into poetry. It sounds a pleasant life. The work was good when the crowds were grateful, and their pockets swelled with coin. She gives you a pained smile and looks away. Seraphin strokes his uh, breaded, uh, braided beard beneath a quiet smirk. Thoughtful. Sorry rubs a knuckle along the edge of her jaw. I found a more dependable application of my talents here. To touch the hearts of others with my voice. I could not give that up. I see. Never mind Farewell. that. Farewell. Okay, so we got a potential companion. Rabiuna. A fiery godlike woman polishes a pair of stocks, standing to them with the fondness of a mother for her favorite child. The room is dim, illuminated only by the glow of her steel fort skin. Her eyes burn with the light of Magran's fire. When she hears you enter, she shoots you a look of utter contempt. I will give you an experience you won't soon forget. Oh, you're the bad girl here. Tell me about yourself. I must assume the question beneath your question is how a fire godlike came to find herself in a place such as this. She leans back against a wall of chains. They clank and rattle, and she smiles at the sound. Perseverance. Being as I am, I have been forced to find it for myself. Now, I teach it to others. To live in a world as a thinking, feeling creature, it is difficult. It demands strength, but we cannot always be strong. I help those who have lost their strength to find it again. She wraps a chain around her arm and tugs. The steel links glow red with forged fire when they touch her skin. How much for your time? 300 copper. What? I know it's a bit more than most, but my service is like nothing you will find anywhere else in Nakataka. Never mind that! I'm looking for the cheap whore in this establishment. Maybe this guy. Or a woman. Uh... Why not? A burly dwarven man hums a John T2 to himself as he fastidiously uh, organizes his collection of scented oils. When he hears you enter the room, he greets you with a, simp with a smile and a humongous, outstretched hand. His grip is strong and sure. Come to seek evolution for your sins? <laughs> he slaps his knee with a bark of laughter. Get it? Evolutions? Absolution? Ha! I crack myself up. Gets me every time. Yeah. It's, it's good. Ugh. He wipes a tear from his eye, still chuckling. Massage? Bath? Whatever you need. Just ask. What? Um... How much for your time? 250 copper. Soaps, oils, fresh linens, all included. He waggles his eyebrows at you and grins. No. This massage in Nekataka. <laughs> That's what they tell me anyway. Uh, do you do anything else? Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no. These old bones. You know how it is. <sighs> Wouldn't want to hurt myself. Alright. Or you, for that matter. How do you end up here? Oh, you don't want to hear about that. I lived a boring life, so... There wouldn't be much to the telling. He crosses his uh, thick arms over his chest. The slight blush spreads across his cheeks. Well, indulge me. Uh, truth be told, my real passion is pottery. <laughs> Trouble is, I got these big hands. <laughs> Not meant for delicate work. Well, that's a bummer. He turns his hands uh, palm up for you to inspect, just one easily large enough to cover your entire face. Worked out in the end, of course. Now I specialize in relieving tension in a mawa and death godlike. He nods to himself. You seem bored here. <sighs> I guess I can't hide my feelings as well as I thought I could. 
It gives you a nervous chuckle and scratches his beard. The stability's good and all, but uh, I haven't seen anything that gets my blood pumping in ages. You know what I mean? That's life without a little excitement, uh, Constantin. Doing the same old thing day in, day out. It's enough to make a man leap from the nearest window. You could come with me. Where to? He raises an inquisitive brow. His large hands, previously dancing with breathless energy still. You know that 700 foot tall statue made of Adra? I'm going after it. <laughs> That's quite the pitch. No kidding. He nearly drops a bottle of massage oil in his excitement. <sighs> I like to see something like that for myself. <sighs> he sighs, a wistful edge in his voice. Do you think I could come with you? Just for a bit. Well, grab your things. Now let's go. Hell, you don't have to tell me twice. It's kind of annoying. I don't know if I want to take him. A chanter barbarian or chanter barbarian. I don't know. I might take him as a barbarian. <laughs> because we kind of need a tank at this point. Or chanter barbarian. I don't know. Chanter Barbarian. Hmm, I don't know. Chanter Barbarian. It's a, it's a weird combo. Let's do it, I guess. I don't know. <sighs> Multi-class characters are not recommended for new players. Great. Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Well, this has got to be a decision that we're gonna stick with. This choice cannot be changed later. So it's gonna be a Chanter Barbarian or Chanter Barbarian. Are we gonna find the Barbarian later? I don't, it's pretty likely that we're not gonna find the Chanter Barbarian. That's for sure. I suppose that even the, does that even make sense? Having a Chanter Barbarian? I don't know. Maybe just have him as a Chanter? Okay. He's available for hire, level 1 and all. A lot is a spellblade, and in the party, a lot that there is a fighter. So the priest, I think we need a priest. We also have Seraphim. Do we just kick a lot? I don't know if I want to kick a lot. Okay, let's just put in the new guy. And I guess I need to level him up. Chanter. Wait, I should just check his stats first. He sounds weird. So, we got this guy. He has high might and con. So, he would be good as a barbarian. Arcana, sleight of hand. Gets good. He could be a good thief. Uh, bluff. I, I guess that's fine. So what do we have here? While many chanters prefer to work their magic from the safety of the backline, backlines, skulls depend on toe-to-toe -to -toe combat to power their invocations. Skulls are found in many cultures with a proud martial tradition celebrating the deeds of their neighbors, kin and ancestors. Offensive invocate invocations cost one less phrase. Weapon criticals have 50% chance to grant a phrase. Penalty, non offensive invocations, cost plus one frame to cast. Okay, so we're gonna focus on offensive invocations. Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Isn't that like a passive invocation?
Is that... Wait a second. So that's a song. Okay, that's phrases. Okay, this is the song. And these are the... Okay, that's offensive invocation. And that's... <sighs> I forgot how it's called. I just call this the song and this is the invocation. We already have one offensive invocation. Which is... Which stuns foes for 5 seconds and pushes them away, which is pretty good. Wait, we need to check his uh, uh, preferred weapons as well. And uh, a few things, I suppose. So he does have character not too high of a resolve. And his preferred skills are Battle Axe, which is a one-handed thing, and Maze, which is again one-handed. Uh, doesn't matter too much, but I suppose something to keep in mind. He might want to use a shield. One-handed plus shield could be uh, a thing we want to use with him. Anyhow. Uh, sleight of Hand, Bluff. And Hell Hiraf crashed upon the shield. Plus minus two armor rating for 12 seconds. Extremely loud offensive invocation. But are these all? Nah. Not every one of them are offensive invocations. Not offensive. So that that's summon. Yeah. Cost three phrases. Offensive yeah, offensive invocation. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm just gonna cancel his level up. A little bit read what the hell he has. I'm gonna level him up at the start of the next video. So, uh, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.